Hello, beautiful creatures from Earth and Beyond. Now, I know I failed to create a video of, for last week, and it's because the pure amount of information on this specific topic was tantamount to overwhelming. And I spent until 2 a.m. yesterday trying to create a video, but I was just so tired that it was the most uninteresting video I think I've ever made because I was just so purely tired. Um, <clears throat> so, I think I can bring a little bit more energy to this video considering I got, well, six hours of sleep. So, let's begin. I am I the Siren. I will be your host through the intergalactic spiritual and physical realms of today's topic, which is the light bearer himself, or as many people call him nowadays, Lucifer. He's not just uh, some pop culture <laughs> meme or TV show, even though I do appreciate the TV shows, because it, that specific TV show, because it shows a different side of him than most people give him credit for. Anyways. So where does this start? We'll start um, biblically, right? So, <clears throat> in the Bible, or actually not in the Bible, because it was taken out in the Book of Giants, Lucifer was an archangel formerly known as Samael, which is the angel is an angel of death, um, darkness, destruction, whatever. But he was also in charge of all the other angels as well. And he also happened to be God's favorite creation because he was made in the very image of perfection and beauty. So where did it all go wrong, right? Hmm. Well, in the book of Giants, it states that Lucifer was talking to God about indentured servitude to human beings. <laughs> And, well, Lucifer, he, he didn't want to. He didn't, he didn't want to submit and give away his free will um, to human beings. And what that means spiritually as a practicing magician, there are certain entities and spirits through the use of sigils, repeated phrases, visualization, among other ways of communicating to these spirits. As human beings, we can talk to these entities and have them, I don't want to say do our bidding, but we can command them to gain what we want out of life. So I can only surmise this is what God had planned for Lucifer. And he was cast out of heaven. He refused. And the Bible states it was his vanity and pride as to the reasonings of his fall. Also in the book of Giants, <clears throat> it states that, and if you're curious about the book of Giants, I just so happened to have made a video last week containing the little tidbits and facts and story of the Book of Giants, which includes, and it's not limited to, Nephilim's fallen angels and the great flood of Noah. So, yeah, give that a, a look if you don't mind. Anyhow, so, in the Book of Giants, it stated that Lucifer took human form and fell to earth with 200 other angels, which implies, of course, that he was not in physical form, spiritually speaking. That's what it implied. It didn't specifically state. All it said was that he took human form or whatever. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, he fell. So, And also in the Bible and Isaiah and Jobs, it also specified um, more specifically just tidbits here and there on the more current version of the Bible that more things that Lucifer had done or how the mighty have fallen, pride before the fall, you know, stuff like that, and how he um, 
had an interaction with jobs. And, you know, there's different there's different things going on in the Bible, but nothing specifically to this nature. So. He longed to be like the Most High, is also what the this Bible states. He longed to be like God. He he wanted worship, and after the fall in more modern society, he still received praise and worship from Luciferians, from Satanists, from people of all different structures and cultures. Worship him. In Dante's Inferno, <clears throat> and there's nine circles of hell. Dante is on the bottom. He's on the last circle of hell, right? And he's in the middle of the planet. And he comes across in the center, and he sees Satan, as they call him, in the book with half of his body in the ground. And his other half out of the ground on the other side? And vice versa, because gravity is weird in the center of the planet, I have to imagine. Anyways, he saw the upper half of Lucifer, and upon his shoulders sat three heads, different directions, and they had different traitors amongst history. Of course, Judas Iscariot, Marcus Brutus, and Gaius Gaius something. I'm most unfamiliar with that last character. But Lucifer could not move, or Satan could not move. He was frozen in a block of ice. And the ninth circle of hell was frozen. Which is very interesting. But, moving forward, that's just another historical representation of Satan as well. And actually, let's let's stop and talk about angels for a second. There are different dimensions and vibrational frequencies of reality that we cannot even perceive. An angelic realm is one of those frequencies in which human beings cannot normally perceive. Maybe a human being with extra sen extra with the capability to perceive vibrational frequency beyond most human beings would be the most common to have those kind of experiences uh, prophets uh, mediums um, you know those those kinds of things but for the most part most human beings cannot interact with the angelic realm it's just the way it is it's the way we're built for now that doesn't mean that the angelic realm can't interact with us we just can't perceive what they're doing around us. Magicians more so, but still kind of in the dark. Um, so, of course, angels are beings of light and divine will, not free will. And their will is the will of God, so to speak, is a way that I have been, that has been ingrained into my head um, through everything that I've been researching. So that's as well as interesting and in my in my experience as well as a Facebook group that I'm in that practices magic I believe someone said along along the lines of that these beings and other entities endeavor to help us just to see what we do with our free will because it's very interesting to them because they don't experience that same kind of free will that we do so on that there. Now, throughout history, Lucifer has been known to be an incarnation of human beings' most evil intentions. Without regret, without hesitation, the darkest being of them all. He's supposed to be purely evil. And along lines of biblical texts and throughout history, he is in these pictures and is painted as someone who's been demonized. And I'm just going to throw in here, he is one of the four demons of hell as well. So, just throwing that out there. Uh, <laughs> but throughout history, he's he is the dark archetype. And of course, in the third dimensional realm, 
most physical realities will have a good and a bad. And you cannot know evil without knowing good and cannot know good without knowing evil. It's the kind of polarities of how the world is supposed to work in the physical dimension. But we are multidimensional and we can ascend our vibrational frequency to go to the higher realms if we so choose. But we're in a point in history where that's becoming more and more difficult as our fate as a society is being plagued by environmental destruction just for one instance. But I didn't come here to talk about the environment. So let's just move forward, right? So I said that Lucifer was one of the four kings, demon kings, correct? So let's look at it like a compass. Which side does um, Lucifer represent? He represents the east. What's also in the east and is known as the brightest planet that you can see from Earth. Venus, right? Venus, yes. Okay, so. <laughs> it is known as the morning star, and so is Lucifer as well. And he is very strongly related to the energies of Venus. Even though they're more feminine, it doesn't matter. So, astrologically speaking, let's dive into Venus just to get a little bit of a background on this specific planet and the energies that it carries. I'm gonna burp. Okay. So, excuse me. Venus. Wow, that's way different, isn't it? For me, definitely. For you, probably. Um, Venus represents. I don't know if I can do that. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, way better. All right, so, <laughs> Whew. so Venus symbolizes emotions of love, beauty, and harmony, correct? And not only does it represent those things, if it's well if if Venus in your natal chart is well positioned, especially for men, it can represent how they relate to women. So it'd be good to check that out if you don't have a natal chart there's plenty of websites I can help out with that so if it's well positioned what it grants is refinement a civilized attitude or civilization itself it also offers artistic abilities and people with Venus or yeah Venus in their chart placed in a major position may not be accustomed to physical labor. And I'm going to throw this out here because we're on the topic anyways. My ascending sign is actually Libra. And I find physical labor sometimes very difficult. But I'm a lunar Aries, so I don't care. Anyways, moving forward. It dominates the signs Libra and Taurus. It's also known to represent, let's see if I can do this, I got this, uh, let's see. It represents our drive to relate to others. It stands for love, comfort, beauty, pleasure, wealth, marriage. happiness, feminine energy, warmth, charm, fulfillment, and values. So a lot of people with this sign in a major point in their natal charts may relate to a quote, I cast my warmth around me and it's reflected in others. Sorry about the pause there. This is a lot of information that I've been learning over the past three days and I would have posted this video sooner, but like I said, just the egregious amount of information that I've been learning. Like, I couldn't even do the video last night. I was falling asleep. And the video was quite boring, too, so. Mm. Man, I need a haircut. Moving forward. 
So let's discuss what we've talked about. Let's just a brief summer, summary of where we were. We talked about Lucifer um, in television slightly. So pop culture, uh, biblically, historically, spiritually. Now, I am going to take you to a story through the stars. Now, I was not expecting to, to read this kind of story. I was just expecting to do basic information on an entity that some people pray to or have more questions about. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy. It, it really is. I clicked on one link, which led to more information, and I clicked on a different link, and I started typing in the computer, and next thing I know, I got 25 tabs open, each relating Lucifer to Venus, to biblical text, to Satanistic text. And did you know Aleister Crowley made... Um, a quote about his guardian angel, Iwas, who he had thought to be Lucifer. And he also surmised that Lucifer was in physical form somewhere else using magical lines of communication to the humans of Earth. Which I found very interesting. Not that I respect Aleister Crowley's very misogynistic views on women but some of his works that are less confusing um, do make a little bit of spiritual sense so I'm kind of iffy on the topic with him and Mathers is a whole nother view um, high magic has never really been my forte because of the amount of intelligent and thorough ritualistic <sighs> ritualistic um, prowess you need I mean it's just it's very complex the magical systems that the Golden Dawn uses are actually very complex as well as uh, John D who communicated with angels to get a specific angelic language on board as well anyway 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 that's a whole another topic I'm going like straight left so Let's see if I can get through this um, story, right? So here is our solar system. Just ignore the fact that I am creating a box and not a circle, okay? And on the outer part where my finger is tracing over is Pluto. That's the outermost of our solar system, right? In the very center is the sun. Now out here, we have one planet in orbit like this around the sun and back around to the cold around the sun like this. It makes this rotation every 3,600 years, approximately. And just bear in mind, this is just another representation of Lucifer and I will give you Lucifer's name as soon as I quit talking and <laughs> start the story, right? So here's a little background. This planet is called Nibiru and its rotation around the sun and it has been confirmed in science that there is a planet uh, on the outskirts of the solar system orbiting the sun in a different direction. And it's about four times the size of Earth. So its gravitational pull has been a problem in the past when it had gotten close to Earth. Anyhow, this planet's name is Nibiru. On the planet, in the beginning, for their planet, there was uh, lots of people. All these people created tribes. There was a tribe like, I'm pretty sure it was the north and the south, right? So they gathered together and then the tribes started to clash. There was a lot of war and for probably thousands of years, people were fighting and dying on the planet. Sounds pretty familiar, right? Um, anyway, eventually they came up with an idea. Let's vote on a king. The king will take a queen from the opposing tribe to make sure that all of the needs are met, right? And then there was a king and he married a queen from the south or the north or whatever it was. I don't remember that specific details. And then they got married, they had a daughter and the first king's lineage began. So each king was named for a specific thing that he did. 
or was supposed to do. One was a king of knowledge, one was a king of peace, one was a king of war, one was a king of, you know, and it just kind of keeps going down, down the line. Over time, they would bring concubines over to uh, procreate and create heirs because a lot of these kings were actually sterile and they were unable to have children. Like the first king, he was unable to have or maybe it was a second. Either way, one of the kings, he was unable to have kids, which, and when he died, passed the, the throne to the next one who couldn't have kids, and then he died, and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, right, what ends up happening is, over a period of time, one of the kings notices that the atmosphere has a tear in it, and along their rotation, what happens is, the closer they get to the sun, the atmosphere that they have on their planet creates a cooler temperature for them and it keeps everybody from burning up. And on its revolution away from the sun, their atmosphere obviously does its thing. It keeps space from getting in, right? Unable to inhabit it. In, in, whatever. And the core of the planet actually keeps all of the beings on, on the rest of the planet, you know, keeps them warm as well as volcanoes which shoot up all the nutrients that the atmosphere could possibly need to keep it structurally intact so that they could survive. Correct? Correct. So, moving on. There's a tear in the atmosphere. And this tear gets bigger and bigger over time. Uh, kings fall, die, get murdered. And the tear in the atmosphere just isn't working. And, and at they're unable to harvest food. There's a lot of drought. It's not raining. People are getting upset, angry with the kings because they keep twiddling their thumbs when really they're trying to figure out a way to, to solve the problem. Some kings aren't. And at a specific point, what ends up happening is one of the kings is sterile because the hole in the atmosphere makes most people on the planet sterile. He's unable to bear children. He adopts a child from the masses and he makes him king who is murdered because of his inactivity to do anything and then another king takes his place the one who literally pushed him off and he was the first king of not of the first king that was not of royal blood correct and an heir decided to challenge him for the throne right Man, this is a crazy story. I'm sorry. This took me literally six hours last night just to kind of connect the dots with specific historical events, too. Okay, either way. So there's a story. There's a king on the throne, right? He gets challenged by Alalu. No, Alalu is on the throne. He gets challenged by Anu, right? In a fight. Alalu loses, but he sneaks away before he gets murdered like the adopted king just was. He sneaks away and he jumps in the spaceship which they have. And at this point in their history, they are shooting nuclear weapons and warheads into the volcanoes to cause them to erupt to try and to fix the atmosphere. It's one of the things that they're doing. So obviously they're technologically advanced enough and they fitted this spaceship with uh, nuclear warheads as well. He jumped in the spaceship and shot a course straight for Earth. Right? Alalu ended up on Earth. So, he pointed his warheads at Nibiru and he's like, yo, come get some. I'll blow you up, right? Ananu had a son, which was Enlil and, and Enki. Now, Enki is Lucifer. And I'll explain a little bit more. I'm trying to get this done quickly. Um, so, um, Enki was like, yo, you guys, don't fight. Let's just go to Earth, mine some gold, right? So Ani was like, oh, sure, yeah, he's a king, right? He was like, yeah, sure. Well, I'll send you down. I'll send you with uh, An, An, Anzu. So he's the equivalent of... of a... I can't think of the word. Hold on. Navigator. Sorry. <laughs> 
So he's the equivalent of a navigator, but instead of being in a galley looking up at the stars, he's in the stars looking down at the planets. So that's the difference, right? So he sends this uh, navigator with Enki to go down to Alalu. And when they get there, um, Enki settles, starts building houses, and Enki, a redo, right? And when they go down, they bring 50 workers with them. So, what happens is, they put the workers to work to get gold, and they start sending shipfuls of gold back, so, because that's what they needed to fix their um, atmosphere. And it said something about raining it in the skies, but I'm not entirely sure what that means. Of course, their technology was, was uh, way far superior, and obviously hundreds of thousands of years ahead of ours, and remains so. So, whatever that means, and it was like reading a manuscript that was written by Yoda, which was crazy to me. But the, the tablets were in an ancient Sumerian language, right? Um, so, they were left behind the 12 tablets of Enki, which is Lucifer. And it specifies pretty much a biblical story, if, if you will. Uh, and to kind of, gosh, okay. So, Enki settled, right? They need more gold. They need more gold. Workers are getting tired. They said that they wanted to start a mutiny. So Enki, Lucifer, he was like, okay, well, let's... Let's create beings on this planet, of this planet, mix it with our DNA, and we'll have them work for us. Uh, Anu, the king in Nibiru, he was like, Yo, that's against interplanetary guidelines. And he's like, oh, no, it's not. Their planet's very similar to ours. Um, and they even have an animal, which was the... Homo erectus. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, right? And they could communicate with him telepathically. And he's like, they even have their own, you know, version of us. They're just millions of years behind. So what I'm doing is just advancing their evolutionary pattern. And I'm taking out the longevity gene. And he's like... Okay. Didn't really do anything about it yet. Um, but later along the line, I'm pretty sure he said that he got mad at him for doing it. Like, whatever. So during this process, he's um, splicing genetics and creating, mixing Homo erectus genetics with not just Anunnaki genetics, which is where the name of his species is because he was taking his own genes, right? Um, he spliced Homo erectus genes with goats, um, with birds. So he was creating griffins, minotaurs. He was creating probably dragons. The, the Bible says he created 200 different types of species. I don't know what he did with those species. He could have just let them go, which would explain old Greek myths as well, even in this story. Right, so, and then after failure after failure, he created human beings as we know today. Right? And they worked fine. He created Adamu and Tiamat. He put them in an enclosure where they bred with each other, which is the Garden of Eden, which they called in this tablet E-D-I-N, put them in an enclosure, correct? They bred with each other. And then their children had children. And then they all bred with the Anunnaki because they made them hereditarily able to conceive the children of the Anunnaki as well, right? So, and their children were able, of course, and yada, yada, yada. And Enki, Lucifer, starts uh, the Brotherhood of the Snake to teach very specific and few or very specific um, humans about knowledge, technology, and astrology, right? And the story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. I mean, in, in ancient, ancient civilizations in time, if we were to go and approach these civilizations, like on, on a, on a, plane 
that we created, right? And we land and they're primitive, they would think that we're gods. And the same has been said throughout history of beings of advanced technological, um, advanced technological, who are well off, more technologically advanced than we are, right? We have the same mindset. Oh, they must be gods, especially with these, with these, with these, uh, Anunnaki lifespans, right? So the, in, the very first civilization and the oldest text of human civilization state in Sumerian that the first kings came from the skies, right? And ruled for ungodly amount of times. 28,000 years, 36,000 years, 58,000 years, right? And in these time periods, the Sumerians were the first to that we know of to come up with um, keeping in line with the story to come up with um, 60 second minutes and 60 minute hours and 24 hour days but they were cutting the sections both into 12 um, hour parts of the day so like day and night obviously and then those um each hour was cut into 30 segments of time. It was a little bit different, and they are actually going by the Dewey Decimal System, so they counted a little bit differently than we did, but not by much. It was, like, by two. So, and they had inventions. They, they had irrigation systems. They were um, utilizing hydraulic systems. These were, were people of civilized intelligence, who had a very good concept of time. So there's no way in my mind that they would lie, you know, about the time periods of these beings that came down from the heavens, which is uh, astrologically the sky, from that from the heavens, astrologically uh, Leo, Gemini, Virgo, Aquarius, right? Those are the heavens, the constellations in the sky. So, this isn't going to be a short video, is it? I'm trying. Okay. So, let's see. Um, honestly, I honestly don't even know. It's just the the twelve tablets of Enki, of of Enki, go along the lines of what we know to be in the Bible, and instead of specific things that happen, like okay, 